Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Picture a convoy of heavily armored vehicles confronted with the daunting task of crossing a wide river. While it may appear to be an insurmountable obstacle, the United States Army has repeatedly risen to the challenge with remarkable ingenuity. Throughout military history, wet gap crossings have been pivotal in turning natural barriers into tactical advantages. During World War II, rivers like the Meuse, Moselle, and Rhine became major impediments for the advancing Allied forces. One notable achievement was the U.S. Army's successful crossing of the Moselle River, spanning 300 feet, to capture the strategic city of Nancy in France. Perhaps even more critical was the crossing of the Rhine River, considered the final major geographical hurdle standing between the Allies and victory in Germany. Unlike dry terrain crossings, wet gap operations expose convoys to significant danger. Vehicles on the bridge are vulnerable targets, lacking any natural cover. To mitigate this risk, the Army constructs a bridgehead on the far side of the river. A secure area that protects the crossing troops and serves as a launch point for additional forces. The process begins with an assault team establishing an initial foothold across the river, setting up a defensive perimeter. This area is then reinforced and developed into a robust bridgehead. Military engineers followed by constructing a bridge that spans the river, enabling the rapid transfer of troops and equipment. Once complete, artillery, armored units, and additional forces flow across, solidifying the position and preparing for offensive operations beyond the riverbank. While wet gap crossing is executed as a combined arms operation, multi-role bridge companies form the backbone of these missions. Their expertise in constructing temporary and semi-permanent bridges remains indispensable to military campaigns. Unlike a hasty river crossing, which demands fewer assets, a deliberate crossing often requires building a bridge across the obstacle. As their name suggests, Multi-role bridge companies handle diverse requirements during wet gap crossings. In some cases, engineers must construct a temporary or semi-permanent bridge to span the obstacle. When this proves impractical, Alternatives such as floating or raft bridges are employed. Factors like river width, bank conditions, and the degree of enemy resistance ultimately dictate which crossing method is chosen. Constructing a bridge is anything but simple.
The M-30 Bridge Erection Boat, or BEB, stands as the workhorse for floating bridge and rafting operations. These versatile boats can be deployed virtually anywhere since they can travel by road, air, or sea. On land, they rely on the common bridge transporter for movement. M30 BEB, built with an aluminum hull, is driven by twin diesel engines. These engines power a water jet propulsion system, enabling the boat to function in shallow waters and in environments with heavy sediment. Furthermore, this design grants remarkable maneuverability, allowing the vessel to move not just forward and backward, but also sideways. Thanks to this agility, the boat is essential for the deployment of ribbon bridges. The Improved Ribbon Bridge, or IRB, represents the latest generation of ribbon bridges, serving either as a floating bridge or a raft capable of ferrying vehicles. Its foundation is the modular bay unit. Multiple interior bays are connected and secured to ramp bays at each end. Each ramp bay can connect to riverbanks up to two meters in height. These are transported overland by either the common bridge transporter or a palletized load system truck. A folding mechanism releases the module into the water, where it unfolds automatically. Once afloat, bridge erection boats seize the bay with ropes and carefully align it to form the bridge structure. Although these bridges are engineered to bear immense loads, their true limits are challenged when massive vehicles like the M1 Abrams tank attempt to cross. To evaluate this, engineers at the U.S. Army Engineer Research and Development Center rigorously test IRBs under heavy weight. Using scaled models of both the tank and the bridge, they study hydrodynamic forces. The gathered data is then applied to real-world situations to refine and enhance bridge performance. The Armored Vehicle Launched Bridge, or AVLB, plays a critical role in sustaining troop momentum across varied combat conditions. The M60 AVLB derives its name from the M60 tank chassis it employs. Its hull carries a launcher system mounted with a scissor-type bridge spanning 60 feet, which can be deployed or recovered swiftly using hydraulic actuators. The bridge, folded on top of the hull, takes only minutes to emplace and can be retrieved from either side. 
Deployment begins with positioning the vehicle at the riverbank, where the launcher's overhead cylinder raises the bridge upright and sets the rectangular outrigger on the ground for stabilization. The tongue cylinder then extends the bridge fully. Once deployed, the vehicle disengages automatically through a quick-release fitting. Recovery is carried out by re-extending the cylinder. Driving forward to connect the bridge halves and retracting it with the hydraulic system. This bridge supports a military load class of 70 when spanning up to 15 meters. Vehicles crossing must keep speeds below 8 miles per hour. The AVLB is powered by a 750 horsepower diesel engine and crewed by two operators. Beyond combat scenarios, its adaptability and efficiency have made it invaluable in disaster response missions as well. In addition to enabling rapid troop mobility, military engineers face the demanding task of counter-mobility operations. Bridge demolition is one of the most crucial aspects providing strategic control by denying enemy movement. For the Royal Monmouthshire Royal Engineers of the British Army, mastering demolition skills is a priority. During the Prairie Storm 4 exercise, they destroyed a bridge using nine kilograms of plastic explosives. Such explosives are favored for their malleability and reliability. Composition C4, one of the most recognized, offers strong water resistance and a detonation velocity of about 26,000 feet per second. In demolitions, C4 and sheet charges are most effective, especially for severing steel. Charges are usually placed along the bridge's steel I-beams, as collapsing these critical supports inflicts severe structural damage. Similarly, NATO's Enhanced Forward Presence Battle Groups, or EFP, continue to refine their bridge demolition practices. These multinational forces routinely conduct exercises aimed at strengthening deterrence and ensuring combat readiness, with demolitions as a key component. Neutralizing enemy counter-mobility efforts is equally vital to sustaining battlefield momentum. For this, armies rely on the formidable M1150 assault breacher vehicle. With its intimidating appearance and formidable arsenal, it excels at clearing minefields and other fortified obstacles. Built on the M1A1 Abrams chassis, it features a high lift adapter at the front that mounts either a full width mine plow or combat dozer blades. The plow creates a one five-foot wide cleared lane for advancing units. Among its most striking features are two mine-clearing line charges. Each charge, packed with 700 blocks of C4, is propelled by a rocket motor.
Upon detonation, it creates a safe corridor measuring 350 feet long and 46 feet wide. These linear charges serve as a proven system for clearing minefields. They can also be deployed by amphibious assault vehicles or towed trailers, launched through either rocket motors or hydraulic systems. This close-in breaching capability ensures secure and rapid passage for advancing forces. In today's combat environment, both mobility and counter-mobility remain indispensable elements of modern warfare. From the rapid deployment of floating ribbon bridges to the explosive force of mine-clearing breachers, the U.S. Army and its allies have developed a versatile and formidable array of tools to tackle one of warfare's oldest challenges, crossing water obstacles. These innovations not only enable armored convoys to maintain momentum on the battlefield, but also provide the tactical flexibility to deny or control access when necessary. Whether it's the silent precision of an M30 bridge erection boat placing modular bays, the thunderous launch of a mine clearing line charge, or the hydraulic efficiency of an AVLB unfolding under fire, each piece of equipment plays a vital role in enabling modern forces to outmaneuver terrain and enemy defenses alike. As we've seen today, wet gap crossings are far more than engineering feats. They are decisive moments that can shape the outcome of a campaign. And thanks to decades of technological progress, military engineers continue to bridge the gap, literally and strategically, between challenge and victory. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.